The 80s were full of hardcore action and badass heroes that fight their way through hordes of goons that apparently learned their shooting skills at the Academy of Stormtroopers. At first glance, Cobra might fall into the same category. Here you also have a hero that takes on hundreds of enemies and engages in glorious violence like you'd expect from a movie of that time. But there's a lot more to Cobra and why it has grown such a cult following. <laughs> What makes Cobra so unique is the atmosphere and the way it's shot. This isn't just another cliche action movie featuring Stallone. Sure, you've got plenty of one-liners like you'd expect, but honestly... You have the right to remain silent. <laughs> one-liners go hand in hand with the 80s and I'd almost give it a bad review if it didn't have any. Cobra is dark. A crazy cult is terrorizing LA led by a deranged serial killing maniac called the Night Slasher. The movie doesn't pull any punches when it comes to this as in typical horror fashion, we see him kill and slash a bunch of people. It might not be as graphic as a full-blown horror movie, but it certainly uses a lot of elements that you'd also see in horror. He's a great villain because we don't know a lot about him nor about the cult. There is a sense of mystery creeping you out. Cobra doesn't flash him out and I think that was a great choice because this is exactly what adds to his mystery. You want to know more about him and that's why you continue watching. How can Stallone's character take on such a threat? This was Stallone's first and only horror movie. He said he was trying to infuse horror and slasher techniques into a police thriller. A risky move and somewhat unusual at the time. Not that similar movies didn't exist, but you usually didn't see such big budget actors in them. Sylvester Stallone back then was a massive star. He was at the height of his success and known by everyone. One of the biggest of that decade, comparable to today's DiCaprio or Brad Pitt levels of stardom. Horror movies on the other hand were known to feature mostly unknown or B-movie actors such as Bruce Campbell or Linda Blair. These actors weren't bad by any stretch, in fact I'd call Bruce Campbell one of the most influential actors of his time, especially within the horror genre. But they never reached big heights. Cobra tried to subvert expectations and experiment with genres. Like the movie or not, but it definitely tried to do something fresh and different. The only thing comparable would be the first Terminator movie that also mixed action with horror, but Arnold Schwarzenegger at that time wasn't a massive star. He was still seen as a newcomer and Terminator didn't have the same budget or media attention as Cobra had. It's a bit unusual to see Stallone in such a setting because you don't actually know how it will impact his character, Marion Cobretti. Horror movies, especially back in the 80s, were known to subvert expectations. The hero dying or failing wasn't unheard of. In fact, that was and still is the case in most horror movies. From the first minute, Cobra builds a dark and depressing atmosphere. It paints a picture of a world gone mad where random mass shootings in supermarkets happen all the time. It actually has a lot in common with The Punisher. In fact, it might have even been released as a Punisher movie without anyone raising an eyebrow. Marion Cobretti is a hardcore police officer that takes on the vilest and most fucked up cases other detectives refuse to pursue or don't have the stomach for. He's the man you call when dealing with evil maniacs or mass shooters. Everyone knows that Cobretti will inflict justice upon them and you better get a few coffins ready. Of course, this sounds exactly like what you'd expect from an 80s action movie, but things aren't that easy. Despite being a badass, he's actually shown to also make mistakes and miscalculations. He's not an emotionless killer machine as he shows a certain level of well-timed humor and compassion. This movie really shines due to Stallone taking the lead and I believe that it wouldn't be nearly as fun if he wasn't in it. Because the story itself is neither good nor anything special. Don't expect anything deep like a critique 
critique or commentary on gun violence or vigilante justice. What makes it so great is the atmosphere it builds, the action and charisma that the actors portray. It's interesting to see a no bullshit guy like Cobretti take on a horror slasher that has no fear. Early on you're not even sure if he can survive this confrontation as there's plenty of moments where the night slasher has the upper hand. Surprisingly, this dark and extremely violent movie was originally supposed to be the first Beverly Hills Cop. When Stallone changed the script and removed almost all humor, as well as increased the budget, the studio decided to fire him and hire Eddie Murphy. What you see here in Cobra is actually one of the ideas Stallone originally had for his version of Beverly Hills Cop. One thing that makes this movie unique are its neon drenched visuals and soundtrack. The dark atmosphere harmonizes perfectly with the purple neon lights that are thrown into various shots. A lot of 80s nostalgia is based on this exact image. The idea that everything was full of purple neon back then overlaid with the synth soundtrack. And while this may seem like pure cliche and a trope now, it enhances the experience of watching this movie. In a way, it reminds me of Miami Vice, a show that was often referred to as MTV Cops due to its modern visuals and soundtrack. It went hand in hand with MTV and often played songs even before their official release. Cobra feels like a darker, horror-influenced version of Miami Vice. It has similar visuals and tries to move away from already established genre expectations, even though it still features plenty of tropes, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. The music does make certain scenes feel like shots of a music video rather than an action movie, and they often appear at random. Most action scenes here have a dark synth sound, but early on you can also hear contemporary tracks. The score sounds amazing and I listen to a lot of these songs all the time. However, I do feel like the synth tracks were heavily overshadowed by the more pop and rock inspired tracks. That's a shame because the movie could have benefited from being a lot more synth heavy, similar to how John Carpenter movies are. I would have also wished for them to be more frequent. Most scenes in Cobra actually don't feature music or rather it's not as prominent as you'd think. Although I have to say, at times the movie definitely has a strong Carpenter-esque vibe and atmosphere, especially with some of the horror-inspired scenes that play out while synth music can be heard in the background. It could have easily been done by John Carpenter, the themes and ideas portrayed here do feel like something he would have been interested in. Of course then Cobra would have likely turned into something else, certainly a lot more visually violent and gory. It's a shame that a lot of scenes and background story was actually cut from this movie. According to various actors that appeared in it, it was originally supposed to be much more complex and deeper. The night slasher had a larger backstory and the cult was featured more. There was also a deeper subplot within the police department and certain characters secretly planning Cobretti's downfall. Apparently Cobra was supposed to be even darker and bloodier, but they had to cut those scenes due to runtime issues as well as original screenings being rated as too violent. It it appears that the marketing team decided to sacrifice the quality of the movie in order to have a larger box office which, in my opinion, actually had the opposite effect. The movie was not a flop by any means. It had a certain level of success but nowhere near what Stallone or his movies were used to. I believe the reason for that was the decision to cut all that extra content. The movie has been extremely streamlined to get a better runtime. However, even though so much was cut and removed, it didn't hurt the atmosphere and vibe of the movie. It is still an amazing action flick and definitely more original and unique in its presentation than a lot of other movies that came out that year or in the 80s in general. It is genuinely surprising that Cobra didn't get a sequel or maybe even a TV show. The movie might not be groundbreaking but there was a lot of potential in turning it into a massive franchise. Cobra might be one of Stallone's most underrated and best movies. It's a very interesting title that didn't get the recognition it deserved upon release but managed to gather a cult following ever since.